This is a lesson on the introduction to trigonometry. There won't be much of a review on trigonometry, the basic sort of right angle trigonometry, although it, it will come up later on. This is going to start off with trigonometry rotations and trigonometry with relation to the coordinate plane. So I'm going to begin with just simple rotations to make sure everybody is up to speed on little things that you've probably seen before but haven't thought about too much lately. And when we look at an angle, and I'll use the symbol theta normally to represent an angle, but it could be any variable, even x, um, or any other Greek symbol, or a, b, it doesn't matter, but I'll usually use the symbol theta. And if the angle theta is in standard position, as we call it, it simply means that it's going to be off the x-axis as I've drawn it, and um, actually off the positive half of the x-axis, so always starting on the right side. And <clears throat> we call the x-axis the initial arm because it's always starting there, and the terminal arm is where the rotation ends. So when you're looking at an angle, trigonometry in this sense, the angle is always formed by sort of the swinging terminal arm. So you're not looking at a full triangle, rather you're looking at a um, an angle between two arms. And we call this a positive rotation if it's going um, counterclockwise. Then this is a negative rotation if you're going clockwise. Again, always starting from that positive x-axis. So if you want to sketch the following angles in standard position, first off, 217 degrees. So you're noticing that with these rotations, you're dealing with angles that are bigger than what you would normally find in a right triangle, and that's significant. So 217 would take us into quadrant 3, because each quadrant is 90 degrees. It's not indicated on the graph, but you'd be about 37 degrees past the uh, x-axis. So it would look somewhat like that. You'll never need to nail it perfectly. Now here's our negative rotation, negative 274. So we look at this, and we're going the opposite direction, still starting in the same place. Notice this takes us just past negative 270. So we're actually into quadrant 1 again. We've just approached it from the other, other direction. Next concept is that angles that share the same terminal arm are coterminal angles. So if you were to look at these two angles, 135 degrees and negative 225 degrees, one positive, one negative, and sketch them, I've got them on the same grid, but the positive angle, 135, takes us into quadrant 2, halfway right down the middle, in fact, quadrant 2. And then theta equal negative 225, starting at the same place but going the opposite direction, takes us to the same terminal arm. So we would call these coterminal angles. What you're probably thinking when you look at that is that you, there's no limit to the number of coterminal angles that you can make. And that's true, because you can keep making infinite loops around, or you can change the direction. So there really are an infinite number of angles coterminal with a given angle, and these make up what occasionally is called a family of coterminal angles. Now if you were to look at the angle 30 degrees, nice simple little angle in quadrant 1, then compare that to 390 degrees. Now notice you've got one extra loop, 360 and then an extra 30, then if you were to consider theta equal to negative 330, now that would mean that we went the other direction, but 330 degrees clockwise. And then compare that with 750 degrees. Now 750 degrees would involve rotating twice and then going 30 more degrees. 
these are all coterminal with 30 degrees because they all took us to the same place and that's all we care about just where you are what your location is doesn't matter which direction you've gone to get there nor does it matter how many times you looped around to get there now I'm not going to draw all these but if you were to look at the 30 degree first off your simple little angle like that and compare it with let's say 390 390 just would mean that we've gone around it once and then another 30 degrees but the same terminal arm and then if you want to the, um, express this family of coterminal angles in one simple little package you could write it like this theta is equal to 30 degrees your basic small one plus 360 degrees n where n is an element of the set of integers remember integers are just sign numbers like plus one plus two minus one minus two and th this notation just means multiples of 360 so 360 n if n was one you'd go 30 plus 360 which is 390 if n was negative two you go 360 times negative 2 is negative 720 so 30 minus 720 would be negative 690 so that just means multiples of 360 and it's just telling you that you can do as many multiples of 360 in any direction you want and it's still going to be coterminal this matters the smallest positive angle in a family of coterminal angles is the principal angle so while it's a lot of fun to be making these extra rotations around the axes, in fact, the one that we care most about, the easiest one to work with, is the, the principal angle. So for the previous one, it'd be the 30 degrees. And normally, you will be expected to express your angle in its simplest form as the principal angle. Now, those things like principal angles, coterminal angles while they show up they're really not all that important in terms of I mean you need to know them but you're not likely to get tested on them specifically the reference angle is more important and we use this a lot with some of the more complicated work and this is the angle between the terminal arm and the nearest half of the x-axis okay implying that the reference angle and I usually use the subscript R to indicate theta R is the reference angle that's what I do not everybody writes it that way it doesn't really matter but the reference angle must be between 0 and 90 degrees now I've said it's inclusive to 0 and 90 other people do not they'll, simp they'll say it's just acute so less than 90 it really doesn't matter but this is where um, we take these extra rotations and we look at it in terms of triangles so if you were to consider an angle of 151 degrees, well, 151 degrees takes you into quadrant 2, but there's no way you can draw a right triangle with a 151 degree angle in it. And that's where the reference angle comes in. So this is what we, we see with our 151 degrees. But the reference angle would be the angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis, and it's always a positive measure and to find it I would encourage you not to rely on formulas rather to use simple reasoning power ask yourself how far from the x-axis am I now, I do have it written out in this case but 180 minus 151 is equal to 29 degrees so you're 29 degrees away from the x-axis and soon we'll be drawing a little reference triangle with 29 degrees in it and then we'll use that for all the normal sort of trig calculations. Let's take a look at a couple more. Here we have negative 561. Now this one includes a few extra rotations or a an extra rotation. So it's a kind of a sloppy looking diagram but I went around it one time that is negative 361 and then there's a little bit left over and once again it takes us into quadrant 2. And not everything has to be in quadrant two by the way but there is the reference angle so after you strip away all the extra rotations that's what you'll get now to find it you do subtract out these extra rotations as I said so I would take that negative 561 and I would get rid of the first 360 degrees 
And if I did, if I subtracted negative 360, it really is equivalent to negative 201 degrees. So negative 561 minus negative 360. Don't make that step more complicated than it has to be. You're just getting rid of the extra 360s, whether you write it as a negative or a positive. And then if you took that negative 2, 1 and you again subtracted a negative 180, I'm using negative 180 because this is going in the negative direction, you'll see that you're 21 degrees away from the x-axis. But again, my work that I've shown is a little more complicated than it has to be. The question is always how far from the x-axis am I? And you have to write it as a positive value. So the reference angle is, in fact, 21 degrees. So if you were given that question with negative 561 degrees, you would initially write it in terms of its reference angle, so you could actually use it for things. Let's do one more. So negative 79 degrees. I've actually got it written right here in front of us. That's going in the negative direction. But the reference angle is how far are we from the x-axis? So the answer is simply 79 degrees, positive 79. So, tr um, so that's what goes on with the very basic trig. The next lessons will gradually make things more and more complicated and throw in more and more new materials. Thank you for your time.